answer the question, where are we with wind turbines for home use? And why, after all this time, do we still not see them on rooftops or in our backyards? I have had a solar system on every home I lived in since I was a little kid, and adding wind to it has always been an idea that I really wanted to explore. We've seen all those massive wind turbines in open fields and offshore generating clean electricity, but if solar panels have become such a popular choice for homeowners, why aren't wind turbines keeping up? Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to dive deeper into the newest improvements to wind energy residential and small commercial sector, and hopefully answer the question, where are we with wind turbines for home use? And why, after all this time, do we still not see them on rooftops or in our backyards? Now, if you will find this video interesting, do not forget to subscribe. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So how do I say this? Wind? Well, it's complicated. Even those who actually make careers out of it will probably tell you that it's not always the best or the easiest option for most homes in the USA or around the world. Wind energy holds immense potential. Now, going back to as early as 5000 BC, people have been using wind energy to propel boats, using windmills to grind grain, and we have been harvesting the power of wind to generate electricity. And a whole lot of it. On the U.S. soil, we generated 10.2% of total utility scale generation last year in 2023. Denmark, on the other hand, generates over 60% electricity from wind sources. But when it comes to residential wind turbines, we are stuck. There's so many different inventions, like the Liam F1, the Ridge Blade, there's the motionless turbine like Aeromine, the Harmony turbines, vertical, horizontal, you name it. I mean, there's so many options. We keep inventing different designs that we're changing it, but is there even a light at the end of the tunnel? Is there even a point or what is the point? Now let's start with some of the main challenges that wind faces and then let's look at a few potential designs that seem to be very, very promising. The biggest challenge with wind is of course its availability. Wind isn't always reliable in residential areas. Unlike the wide open plains and deserts where large wind turbines thrive, many homes are in areas with inconsistent or low wind speeds. Most turbines need a steady breeze to function efficiently. A typical turbine requires wind speeds of about 6 to 9 miles per hour or 3 to 4 meters per second to start generating. Now, the minimum wind velocity is generally referred to as the wind turbine's cut-in speed. So, for the best results, as wind turbines should be positioned in the area where there is consistent wind speed greater than the minimum cut-in speed before power starts being being produced. Now you can check wind speed in your actual location by just looking up Global Wind Atlas. I personally live in Prosper, Texas, and our average wind speed at 10 meters high are between 4 and 5 meters per second. This is why wind turbines that are vertical axis, such as the Harmony turbines, might just be the better solution for the resi area. Now most residential neighborhoods don't have what's known as that clean wind. Building trees and other structures create turbulent, unpredictable airflow, which traditional turbines struggle to convert into usable energy. Most of the population in the world lives in or by big cities, and only a small percentage of people live in areas where wind speeds are strong enough to provide that cut-in speed needed. Now, the solution to the low wind speeds is exactly what Harmony turbines are working on. The vertical axis wind turbine is a turbine in which the rotor axis is in the vertical direction. Because of exactly that, these turbines don't need to be pointed into the wind to be effective. You know how the horizontal axis turbines have to rely on the wind rows to determine the best direction. This makes the vertical axis turbine more advantageous, advantageous. Which one is it? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. For the use in places where wind direction is highly variable or just more dirty and less predictable. Turbines with such a design are significantly quieter 
than horizontal axis turbines, making them particularly useful in residential and urban areas. Now, the goal is to integrate those turbines, whether motionless, bladeless, or vertical turbines, into existing infrastructure and make the use of the existing wind. The dirty wind is already there. Now, they're also making a point of designing these turbines to look modern and simply good looking so that they can actually be approved by the city council. So it does appear that those companies are tackling the challenge of wind availability as much as they can. And while the vertical axis turbines not being as efficient as the horizontal axis wind turbines, there still seems to be a lot more hope there. Now, the second big issue is, of course, the space needed. While solar panels are just installed on top of roofs for residential and commercial applications, wind will also require space. Now, zoning and permitting process can also become a pretty big battle. Now, most jurisdictions just don't know much about it and how to properly handle it. And to be honest with you, a lot of city officials will just put priority on aesthetics and community interests. But that just simply reminds me of how solar was 10 or 15 years ago. Like we would call the city to get a permit for solar panels and they would do anything to talk the homeowner out of purchasing a solar system. So the battle is not lost. We just actually have to fight for it. But that has been definitely one of the obstacles of residential wind to move forward in that right direction. This is also where the vertical axis turbines are helping to make the battle easier as the vertical axis turbines will operate quieter and in lower wind speeds. Another big challenge when it comes to wind turbines is the height at which they need to be installed. The higher you can install them, the better due to higher wind speed or less turbulent air. Now remember, we want that clean air without the disruption from objects such as building and trees. Now, rooftop wind turbines, while occasionally implemented, present several challenges. They generate vibrations that transfer to the building structure, potentially causing indoor noise issues. The turbulent wind conditions typically at rooftop heights can reduce turbine lifespan and actually energy output. Now, all these factors, of course, combined with the extra costs for addressing such concerns, generally make rooftop turbines less economically viable than the ones that are ground-based or installed on towers. Now, at the end of the day, even if the wind turbine will operate at low wind speed and not generate too much noise, it still has to make financial sense. Otherwise, it will be a very, very tough sale. So what are these solutions? Well, after my original video, I was brainstorming with my team and we thought, why don't they make a wind turbine that could actually be used alongside highways? In USA, we have so many high-speed roads. We are the country that spends the most amount of time driving. So we do generate a bunch of that wind turbulence. And why don't we use the wind that is generated by the vehicles moving on the road? Well, you guessed it, there are actually inventions like that as well. Enlil, E-N-L-I-L, -L, is a vertical turbine developed by Istanbul Technical University and a tech firm, the Veshitech. It has been placed on roadsides in Turkey to harness the wind generated by passing vehicles and also to soak up the solar energy at the same time. Now, I did check and there hasn't been many news regarding their product and their pilot program. I also checked their last Instagram post and unfortunately it was back in 2021. Now, Enlil is not the only vertical invention. Another interesting one I found was made by Tak Studio. It's funny because <laughs> Tak actually means yes in Polish. That's my native language if you didn't know. Now, this concept uses the wind to power overhead lights. And that's not it. There's another concept similar to those by Capture Mobility that also seems to have been inactive since 2018. Ugh. I mean, it's so depressing just researching all of this. Like, we tried so hard to come up with the best idea, yet we cannot make even one work. So... <laughs> Why do I even bring up Harmony Turbines? 
Well, they have actually pretty big presence. They have been posting updates on their website and they provide a lot more data and answers, which is giving me a lot more hope. Their turbine, the Savonius turbine, has been said to be one of the least efficient turbine types, which the CEO and his wife have been trying to clarify as a false statement. See, this mistake was done back in 1950s or 1960s like, can you actually believe it? Like, this is an actual propaganda, like the scary side of the internet where they put something out and it's being copied and copied. Now, they're making a very important point to clarify that mistake that it's not one of the least efficient one. Their turbine is, as you guessed it, a vertical axis turbine with an S-shaped design. It typically consists of two or three curved blades that resemble a cylindrical S-shape when viewed from above. The concave side of the blade catches the wind, causing the turbine to rotate. The turbine works based on drag force. As wind hits the concave side of the blade, it exerts more force than on the convex side, creating a torque that drives the turbine. Now, Harmony Turbine started their work back in 2020, and they have been consistently providing updates on their testing and data collection. They're not yet available for sale, but they plan to have them at around five to six thousand dollars per unit. Their turbine is very unique in the sense that it's patented furling system that protects their turbine while producing full power through high winds, and their variable air gap axial flux generator design allows it to self-start at very low speed. So you won't have that like super fast damaging wind to those wind turbines. Now, they did not publish any ratings just yet as they are working with a few universities to analyze and study their technology. They do mention on their facts sheet on their website that the prototype should generate about 400 watts at 25 miles per hour wind. Now, as you know, my background in solar energy, my biggest question is, well, you give me a solar panel, I still need some sort of converter to make that power generated usable in my home. And this, they state that they will partner eventually with companies to provide the needed connection to connect the wind to the home. But as with most projects like this one, this is a question or a task that can be tackled at a later time and not just yet. Now, what I do truly appreciate about them is, again, just how open they are about everything that they do. You really should check out their YouTube channel as well. They show a lot of data there as well. This is how I wish most companies would share collected data in progress that they accomplish. People have been looking for a solution to residential wound problem or a complication, if you want to call it that, for a very long time with very little luck. But more and more people install solar panels in their homes. We get batteries to avoid selling excess power to the grid. But we have the hardest time figuring out a solution for wind power generation. I personally would love to supplement my solar production with a small wind generator. And maybe I should just go online and buy one of Amazon or Alibaba, one of those units, and test it here for y'all on the channel. Let me know if that's something that you would want to see down in the comments down below. Oh, and before I forget, I don't know if I already asked you, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you found this video interesting, like, subscribe, comment down below. I really try to respond to as many comments as possible. So as sad as this update is, and it really is not that sad. I am actually very, very excited about American investors and startup pushing for a residential wind solution. And it does look like the wind will start blowing towards their direction very, very soon. What do you guys think? Make sure to let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for being here and watching. And I will see you in my next video.